Good morning, and welcome to worship with Church Street United Methodist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Pastor Tim Best, and I'm glad you have chosen to worship with us this morning. Today, our in-person service at 900 Henley Street welcomes the Bishop of the Holston Conference, Reverend Dr. Deborah Wallace Padgett. We're recording her sermon, and we'll make that available to you, so we hope you will visit our YouTube channel later this week so you can hear from our new bishop and be inspired by her. As we gather today, let us open our hearts and minds for worship. Will you join me this morning in our unison prayer? God of grace and glory, you call us with your voice of flame to be your people, faithful and courageous. As your beloved son embraced his mission in the waters of baptism, inspire us with the fire of your spirit to join in his transforming work. We ask this in the name of our savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever, amen.
Thank you to all who have made your pledge to the 2022 operating budget so far. To date, we have received 228 pledges for the operating budget this year, but we're still short of our goal. Our finance committee is in the process this month of solidifying our budget, and by making a pledge, you allow our finance committee, staff, and clergy to plan and prepare for mission and ministry together for this year. You can make your pledge by turning in your pledge card online at the link on the screen or by contacting Kate Spencer to discuss your commitment. Thank you for helping us plan for our ministry this year. Will you join me now in our prayer for illumination? Gracious God, as we turn to your word for us, may the Spirit of God rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, and in our living. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. Hear now the word of the Lord. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the fire shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. 
Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of the most sacred moments in our ritual for the sacrament of baptism is when the minister looks at the parents and asks, what name is given this child? We already know the baby's name. We have it written on the certificate. It is in the bulletin. It's been on the calendar for the last few weeks. Mary Elizabeth or Joseph Harold, we already know. By the way, just some help with vocabulary. That is the christening, naming the child. The baptism is the sacrament, the outward and visible sign of the water that before the child broke through the waters of the womb, God has already claimed this child. God has named this child son or daughter. It is the responsibility of the parents and the church community to bring this child up into that name. Names are chosen because of special memories or to pass down family history or to make a new beginning or to commemorate an event. Maybe today you can go through the list of names in your family and remember the stories. One of my favorite poems I heard several years ago is called Naming the Animals, written by Anthony Hecht. Having commanded Adam to bestow names upon all the creatures, God withdrew to Empyrean palaces of blue that warm and windless morning long ago and seemed to take no notice of the vexed look on the young man's face as he took thought of all the miracles the Lord had wrought, now to be labeled, dubbed, eclept, indexed. Before an addled mind and puddled brow, the feathered nation and the finny prey passed by. There went biped and quadruped. Adam looked forth with bottomless dismay into the tragic eyes of his first cow and shyly ventured, thou shalt be called Fred. <laughs> Ever since I heard that poem, I cannot help but think, there's Fred, and there's Fred, whenever I drive by a pasture. Today in the church year, we call this the baptism of the Lord, and we usually read the gospel lesson. This year it's from Luke, when John baptizes Jesus and God's voice comes from the heavens and says, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Mary and Joseph were each told that the child shall be named Jesus. We borrow words from Isaiah and call Jesus Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace. On this day, we hear God say that Jesus is God's Son. For Christians who call ourselves children of God, we make the next familial step and say we are brothers and sisters in Christ. When we name a child at baptism, we introduce them to the congregation as your newest sister or newest brother in Christ. As we move into a new year, I hope we will focus on what it means to be connected to one another. The old hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Buys, speaks to the truth that it is God's Spirit that connects us together to Christ. I wanted us to focus on the Old Testament reading this morning because it reminds us that God has always worked in community. Yes, we want to study scripture and be faithful in prayer to enrich our personal relationship with God, but that relationship always assumes the community. Isaiah is talking to those who are in exile in Babylon. You could say they are political prisoners taken from their homeland and forced into captivity. We hear their laments in the book of Psalms. By the waters of Babylon, we hung up our harps. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Joyce Shin is a Presbyterian minister in Pennsylvania. She wrote about this scripture in the journal Christian Century about five years ago. 
She talked about the importance of tribe and symbols and shared history telling us who we are. But when all of that becomes shaky ground, we begin to ask ourselves, who are we? This week, we've replayed images of the violence on the Capitol last year. Who are we as a country? As a country? Lawsuits and strikes abound over how to live together in a pandemic. Who are we as a country? Churches and other institutions ask, how do we navigate new waters? Who are we? We keep affirming over and over, we've never been more divided. <laughs> we seem to agree on that. So who are we? Isaiah has answers. Isaiah speaks to the whole community, and we know that later the exilic community is returned and restored. Isaiah assures them that God has not forgotten or forsaken them. Speaking to Jacob and Israel, not individuals, but the whole community. Thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. A foreign king has said, you belong to me now. God says, I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. God does not say, you will be spared from all hardship and danger and worry and things that happen in this world. Instead, when you face them, I will be with you. The waters, maybe they thought back to Moses leading their ancestors through the Red Sea. The fire and flame must be fresh in their minds with the recent destruction of Jerusalem and all of the symbols that told them who they were. Isaiah reminds them of their history and of God's covenant. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. It may seem to the people that other powers are in charge for a while. That is the world's perception. Remember whose you are. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth. In other words, you will not be in captivity forever. You will be restored. Everyone who is called by my name, everyone whom God created, everyone whom God formed will be restored. One thing that I am weary of hearing, to, uh, hearing these days is, we're all in this together, we're all in this together, and yet our actions show that we fend for ourselves. And you, you're on your own, get in line, behind me, sister. <laughs> Isaiah reminds us that God is with us in this together. That makes a huge difference. Think about the communities you are in in your family, your neighborhood or apartment, or, or your dormitory, the place where you work, your state, your country, God is speaking to us. I have formed you. I have called you by name. I am with you. You are precious in my sight. I remember my mother would call me, she would call each of us children, precious lamb. Oh, precious lamb. That made a difference in how we view ourselves. Whatever hurt had befallen us, whatever disappointment, oh, precious lamb. Think of the healing and the power when we hear God holding all of us to God's heart and calling us by our name. You are precious in my sight. 
Blessed be the tie that binds us. Amen. Having heard the word read and proclaimed, let us join together as we affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to God. Good and gracious God, there are many different kinds of waters, both calm and stormy. We give you thanks that our baptisms remind us that you go with us no matter the weather, no matter the waters of our lives. Sometimes the waters are calm and invigorating, times when we are led beside still waters. We give you thanks for moments of our life that have had smooth sailing, for moments that have brought us joy and laughter, for moments when we've worked hard and seen results, for moments when families have been united in fellowship, for moments when we get to celebrate with friends and escape for a little while from the chaos of this world. Sometimes the waters are scary and dangerous, times when we are led through storms. We pray that you would be with those of us who are navigating difficult waters, for those who have recently lost loved ones, for those who feel they are not loved or welcomed, for those who struggle with depression and other illnesses. We pray this day for those on our hearts, either out loud or silently. Hear us, gracious God, as we pray as Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we move into a new week together, I pray that you know full well the love of Almighty God, the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and for always. Amen. Thank you.